You know, it was only two months ago that Marlon and I were up here. It seems like it was a couple years ago we preached the word essential worker. You would have thought we were preaching it during 2020 when COVID was breaking out, but it was only two months ago. So uh, that was a privilege for us then. It was our first time actually sharing the stage together, and we get to do it again. Saints, what's amazing about this is that none of it is planned ahead of time. It's not like we had this date planned out. This is what the Lord chose, and and this is how it lined up. And so it's a privilege for us to get to do this for you. Uh, So the last word we preached was essential work. And tonight, we are going to preach a word entitled the King's Cup. Okay. Y'all familiar with the Heroic Cup? Okay. I know you are because it's growing inside this body. When I look around, I see a bunch of unsung heroes who love that cup, who will carry that cup and pass it on to the next generation. So... These messages, they're not cleverly planned out messages, at least not on our part. The Lord, he's planning them out, and he's delivering them to us. We didn't purchase this sermon uh, on some kind of uh, series kit off. I'm too pathetic to engage the word myself and speak for my own experience.com. It's, you know, that's not an actual site, but there are sites just like that, and that's an actual common practice. Well, I, I think there is, because actually start with www. That start when World Wild Web. Yeah. It's already world, worldly. It's already wild, and it's a web. Yeah. So probably some <laughs> something there you may find it. But what we have for you guys tonight, we download it from yeah. the throne of God. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Don't go out trying to check that website out. All right. <laughs> Look, this isn't us, church. We are the kind of church that stays faithful to our faithful King. He's our great shepherd, he's our great high priest, and he's been guiding us to this very place that we're at tonight. Look, something supernatural happens when we devote our lives to the Father and to the brotherhood of believers. Are you experiencing that? We're experiencing, as we give our life fully to the king, and we say we are going to live and die for the king and for this body, something supernatural is happening. It's breaking out among us. We can feel it in our worship service, and you're going to feel it tonight with this word. Look, there's no better place to be, saints. Sunday's message, Unsung Heroes, was a gem that only the living God could reveal to us. And this should extract the highest praise from our hearts. So tonight, we will engage two storylines of scripture to advance us all the more in what our attitude should be like and the action that must, must be executed in order to truly share in the King's Cup. Before we do, though, we're going to pick back up in Matthew 20 verse 22 and 23, and this was one of the central passages from Sunday. Church, can you tell that we're having fun already? Yeah. It's going to be a fun night today. All right, let's start on verse 22, Matthew 20, 22. You don't know what you're asking, Jesus says to them. Can you drink the cup I'm going to drink? We can, they answer. Jesus said to them, you will indeed drink from my cup, but to see on my right or left is not for me to grant. This place belongs to those from whom they have been prepared by my Father. So easy for us to get to get asking the wrong questions, yeah. asking the wrong questions of who is greater in the in the uh, in the kingdom, or can we see? Next to you. You know, we do ask on, when selfish ambition, and that's why we don't see that the cup is not the cup, but is his cup. Yeah. And that's the cup that he wants us to drink. Amen. The cup became my cup. The cup became the cup, the king's cup. And that's the cup that we're actually looking for today, church. Amen. So we're going to praise God. That Jesus promised to his disciples that they would drink of the cup. But he actually didn't say how. So that's a question we can, we need to pursue. But thank God that the Bible, if you keep reading, is revealing you more. Amen? Amen. Let's see on verse 24. He says, "When uh, when they tell her about this, they were indignant with the two brothers. Jesus called them together and said, 
You know that the rulers of the Gentiles lord, uh, 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 lord it over them. And their high official experience authority over them. No, no so with you. Instead, whoever wants to become great among you, um, uh, among you must be your servant. Yeah. And whoever wants to be first must be your, your slave. Just as the Son of Man did not come to, to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. So the Lord has surely show us how this is done, how we drink from the cup. But we still have another question here. How do we serve? How do we give our life as a ransom for others? But tonight, church, we're going after that. Come on. Yeah. And we're going to show you how it's done. But first, we need to go to the beginning. Come on, let's go to Genesis chapter 14. And we're going to pick up in verse 13. Say the king's cup as you're turning there. A man who had escaped came and reported this to Abram the Hebrew. Now Abram was living near the great trees of Mamre the Amorite, a brother of Eshcol and Aner. All of them were allied with Abram. When Abram heard that his relative had been taken captive, he called out the 318 trained men born, as, born in his household and went in pursuit as far as Dan. Saints, the first step is that we need to be in alliance with the brotherhood. We need to be in alliance with those who are in alliance with God. At this point, Abraham, or Abram, he's living in Hebron, which means alliance. And uh, this is where Abraham would join forces with other men. This is where we start seeing our brothers the way that God sees them. We start to see our brothers in the way that they're pursuing the father and that's what brings us into unity and into alliance with our brothers so we have our swords for our brothers just like these men were for abram the second thing is we use our resources to build others up this takes commitment we use what god has given to us in order to build up our brothers in order to uh, continue to pursue the things of god as one body so we see how abraham used his resources to build up other men he makes other men useful, and he gives them weapons. He makes them ready for battle and makes them ready to be able to fight for others. So Abraham was willing to cross enemy territory. He was given to give his life for the sake of others. His heart was a righteous heart that he was looking for other people to be delivered. His resources what to make other mighty. He went to rescue them, and he succeeded. Genesis 14, 15 says, During the night, Abraham divided his men and attacked them, and he uh, routed them, pursuing them as far as uh, Ahobat, north of Damascus. He recovered all the goods and brought back his relative love and his possession, together with the woman and the people. After Abraham returned to the, uh, from, the defeat, uh, from defeating uh, Kedor Larme, excuse my Hebrew, and the kings, and the kings aligned with him, the king of Sodom came out and met him in the valley of, Ch uh, of Chabeth. That is the king valley. So to this kind of man, to men that are willing to give their life for others, to men that are willing to cross enemy territory, the Lord will grant success to them. The Lord will grant victory to this kind of man that is willing to give their life for others, men. Amen. And that's the kind of man that we aiming for you to become today, church. Amen. The kind of man that give his life for, as a ransom for many so they can be delivered from captivity. Okay, so verse 17 says that the king of Sodom came out to meet Abram in the valley of Sheva. Verse 18 says, Then Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought out bread and wine. He was priest of God Most High, and he blessed Abram, saying, Blessed be Abram by God Most High, creator of heaven and earth, and praise be to God Most High, who delivered your enemies into your hand. Then Abram gave him a tenth of everything. So Abraham shared the cup of the king of Shalom, the king of righteousness, rather than sharing a cup with the king of Sodom. 
You see that there in verse 17 and 18? He makes right alliances with the right kind of men. He uses his resources for others. He builds up other men. And he went into enemy territory to bring back captives and to sacrifice his own life in order to go get other men. Then he drank the cup of victory with Melchizedek, the king of righteousness and the king of peace. But there is another cup that's there. And this is the cup that was offered to Abraham in verse 21. So 21 says, The king of Sodom said to Abraham, Give me the people and keep the goods for yourself. But Abraham, Abraham said to the king of Sodom, When raised hand, uh, I have sworn uh, uh, an oath to the Lord, God most high, creator of heaven and earth, that I will accept nothing belonging to you, not even a thread or the, or the strap of a sandal, so that you will never be able to say, I made Abraham rich. I will accept nothing, but my men have eaten, uh, but what my men have eaten, and the share that belongs to the men who went, that went with me, to, uh, to an heir, a shlok, and a mer. Let them have their share. Abraham was a man that didn't want anything for himself, because he knew who his God was. Yes. He knew what his lords can do for him. And he knew that men cannot do that for him at all. Amen. But he also recognized the brothers that went alongside with him. He recognized two unnamed men that went in fight battle alongside with him. And he said, to do, to them, give them what belongs to them. He put his, his, himself down so others can be mighty. Come on. You see, but the cup of Sodom is there. And Abraham, he refused it. Yeah, he, he refused the cup of this word. The cup of Sodom. The cup that say, take something for yourself. Uh, be selfish about what you have accomplished. Honor yourself instead of honoring God. That's the cup of this word. And Abraham refused it immediately. We have to recognize, church, the cup of this word. The cup of Sodom. The entitlement. The, the, the selfishness that comes when we have victories. On those moments is when the cup of Sodom actually arrives. Yeah. It's when we have victories. When we have become victorious that we know it was the Lord. But we feel a little bit entitled like, oh, I need to take some of, a little bit of this for myself. Look at what, I, what, what the Lord did through me. Or look what I did for the Lord. We need to get that cup out of here. Yeah. Hey, yeah. bro, let me jump in here real quick. So, so real quick, this is what that looks like. I mean, Abram had 318 trained men in his home, right? right. Okay, I got a couple of trained men growing up in my home. Yeah. They're doing some mighty exploits for the Lord right now. Yeah. They're growing in their workplace. They're growing in, their, in prison ministry. And, and they're continuing to put the word into practice, things that I've poured out into them. And I'm not the only one doing that, but they're living in my home. So what this looks like is, hey... You know, this brother's doing really well in his workplace. In fact, I mean, even, even the, the uh, secular realm is recognizing that, man, he's just going after it. And he's been a blessing to everyone around him. And I begin to think, oh, yeah, that, that's, that's for me. That's accredited to yeah. me. That's work that I've been doing, that I've been pouring out. And that's why somebody's coming and sharing that with me now. I should rejoice in that for myself. I should continue to boast myself up in this and, and say, yeah, they wouldn't be there without me. That's what this would look like if I drink the cup of Sodom, if I want to take something for myself, rather than saying, no, yeah, that brother's going after it because he chose to ally himself rightly. Right. He chose to get with other men of God who were going after the things of God, and, and Abram, he led these men through it. He didn't just go and tell them to go do something. He went out with them, and that's what this looks like. Right. All right? It's not just uh, the, these trained men who are going and getting uh, prestige for me. No, it's about Abram going out and getting it with them and leading them through that. Yeah. Since that Abraham knew that his treasure was in heaven, that was nothing that the world can offer to him. Mm. But there's something in here. You remember why uh, Abraham went to battle? Why he, was, how, why he went to battle for? For Lot. But where is Lot in the story? <laughs> like, uh, we don't know about anything about Lot except that he was rescued. We don't see Abraham saying to Lot, 
Hey, man, I rescue you from your, cap from your captive. Look what I did. Do we see that on Abraham? No. Or do we see Abraham putting Lot down? Why you get yourself in trouble and I have to rescue you? <laughs> but see, Abraham did not put Lot in a... Uh, he actually did not claim anything from Lot. He did not try to get praise from men. Love was the very reason why he was in this situation. But he was not willing to actually put blame or ask for recognition from what he did for him. But Lot actually looked this for himself. He, there, he was living with Abraham, right? You remember that? Yeah. And they both were rich. They have plenty of stuff. And Abraham told him, go choose Choose a field, and I will go the other direction. But Lot, on his selfish ambition, he chose the field that looked right to his eyes. How many times in our life we do that? Like uh, we look at what seems right, and we go for that because it just seems right, right? Mm. But we don't realize that we actually move into enemy territory. Yeah, that ends up something nasty. We actually getting close to Sodom. We sharing on his table. But, but how that looks like? It's like, well, you know, I have, I have uh, the pastor told me this, but I don't really feel like that's a good direction for me. I'd rather do this. I know what the word says about this topic, but I prefer to go on this direction. Well, I know I have to spend time with my kids and my, and my wife. And I have to read the Bible. I have to pray for my brothers. But man, this show in Netflix is really good. <laughs> you actually crossing enemy territory, and when you are there, you are very likely that you will go to captivity. Yeah, where that ends up for Lot is in a cave with his two daughters. The, the whole reason why he split was because they ha he had so many possessions but his life, all that we know is that he ends up raising up two sons that are enemies of Israel. We don't want to be in that place. So this isn't about Lot tonight. We're going to move forward. We're talking about Abram and the example he set. And we're going to look at another man who followed in Abram's example in Genesis 15, verse 2 and 3. So say the king's cup as you turn there. Verse 2 says, but Abram said, O sovereign Lord. What can you give me since I remain childless, and the one who will inherit my estate is Eliezer of Damascus? And Abram said, You have given me no children, so a servant in my household will be my heir. Look, Abram's bringing up a pretty valid point here. Lord, you can bless me. You can give me all these things. Lord, I'll only drink from your cup, but what good is that if it ends with me, if it just ends here? If I don't have a son, if you don't give me an heir, what good is it? How is this going to perpetuate through the generations? See, Abram is still learning in this point. Without getting trapped, speculating too much, it's fair to assume that Eliezer would have been one of the 318 trained men in his house, right? Yeah. It's, it's, I, I think it's safe to say he was probably there and went uh, along on this exploit with Abram. We know for certain that Abram considered him as the one who would inherit his estate since he had not had a son yet that had been born. So bear with us as we make yet another hypothesis that Eliezer could have been there to watch his master reject the carnal cup of Sodom and partake in the king's righteous and peacemaking cup instead with Melchizedek. See what I did there? It's kind of like a Abraham when he's going back and forth with God. You, you just got to bear with us on this. Look, we're going to take a journey with, uh, through Genesis 24, and we're going to pick up in verse 1. And we're going to see how this... Uh, Unnamed servant also follows the same pattern. So in Genesis 24, verse 1, it says, Abraham was now old and well advanced in years, and the Lord had blessed him in every way. He said to the chief servant in his household, the one in charge of all he had, put your hand under my thigh. I want you to swear by the Lord, the God of heaven and the God of earth, that you will not get a wife for my son from the daughters of the Canaanites among whom I, am whom I am living, but go to my country 
and my own relatives and get a wife for my son Isaac. So here in Genesis 24, we have a chief servant, or it could be translated as the oldest servant. He was selected by Abraham to go on a mission to go find a wife for his son Isaac. So the very thing that he asked the Lord for, the Lord answered and gave him. He gave him a son, right? This is a huge responsibility for this servant. It would take a wholehearted devotion to the Lord and to his master in order to be successful. So we see this in the story of this unnamed servant, that he is devoted to the Lord and he's devoted to the success of his master. We can't read the whole story tonight, but go through and read for yourself to see just how devoted this servant was. Saints, this servant was rightly allied with Abraham. Therefore, he was rightly allied with God. So now we know that this servant was chosen by Abraham wisely. He knew that this was the servant for the job. Yeah. Now let's continue reading on verse 7. The Lord, the God of heaven, who brought me out of my father's household and my native land, native land and who spoke to me and promised me on all, saying, To your offspring I will give this land. He will send his angel before you so that you can get a wife for my son, uh, uh, for my son from there. So you see how Abraham is actually directing his servant and telling him, my Lord will be with you. Yeah. He's actually giving, giving to him something precious. Let's continue reading on verse 8. If the woman is unwilling to come back with you, then you will be released from, his oath, from this oath of mine. Only... Do not take my son back there. So the servant puts his hand under the type of his servant Abraham and swore a oath to him concerning, uh, concerning this master. Then the servant left, take him with him, ten of his master camel, loaded with all kinds of good things from his master. So all kinds, Spencer. All kinds. <laughs> He set out from the uh, Nar uh, Nara uh, uh, Neharaim and made his way to the town of Nahor. So this unnamed servant was entrusted with the possession of the master. Yeah. He was entrusted with the blessing of his God to him to go to get for his son, the one that actually is getting the inheritance that otherwise will be his. <laughs> you catch that? Yeah. This man is been given with power and authority of all kinds to actually go and find a wife for his son. Yeah. What have been what we have been given as a church? What the Lord have given us that we actually go and bring many from captivity? Mm. The Lord have given us many gifts. The same way that the Lord blessed Abraham, uh, Abraham is blessing those around him. Yeah. He's blessing this servant so he has power and authority and all kinds of good gifts. Think about the good gift that the Lord has given to you. The gift of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit that's been given to you. The Lord, Abraham, is using his, resource, his resources to build others up. So do we. Amen. Amen. So in Genesis 24, verse 11, it says, He had the camels kneel down near the well outside the town. It was toward evening, the time the women go out to draw water. Then he prayed, Lord, God of my master Abraham, make me successful today and show kindness to my master Abraham. See, I am standing beside this spring, and the daughters of the townspeople are coming out to draw water. May it be that when I say to a young woman, Please let down your jar that I may have a drink. And she says, drink, and I'll water your camels too. Let her be the one you have chosen for your servant Isaac. By this, I will know that you have shown kindness to my master. Saints, the servant here is not praying for success for himself. He's praying for success for his master. Oh, Abraham told him, the God whom I walk before will go before you and will help you. And he's now stopping. He's already passed through enemy territory. And he's saying, Lord, I need you to give me success on this mission. Lord, I care about my master. I care about what he wants accomplished. Will you give me success? And he lays something 
very uh, specific out in order for the Lord to show up and answer that for him and make it clear of who this woman might be. He crossed the enemy lines to accomplish his master's mission. And when he found the one that the Lord wants for his master, he was very sure of it. He gave, he used every gift that he received from his master in order to ransom uh, Rebecca. In verse, so we're going to jump down to Genesis 24, verse 54 through 56. Again, we can't go through the whole story, but read through it for yourself. Then he and the men who were with him ate and drank and spent the night there. When they got up the next morning, he said, send me on my way to my master. But her brother and her mother replied, let the young woman remain with us ten days or so. Then you may go. But he said to them, do not detain me now that the Lord has granted success to my journey. Send me on my way so that I may go to my master. Saints, we could see a direct reflection here. There is no desire for the carnal cup that is being offered here. This can, be, this can be parallel to the cup of Sodom. The servant does not want it. He says, no, send me back to my master. That's where the reward is. The reward is having success and prosperity for my master, not for myself. So how, how attractive is this when you're on a mission? When you can meet this kind of opposition and when you know that, Okay, I found success, but now there's still opposition there. There's still something that's tugging at my carnal desires to try to keep me from following all the way through with the mission. I know this unnamed servant isn't the only one who goes through these things. The cup of pleasure and to get comfortable is presented to him. And this is the same thing that happens to us. He could say, all right, I hit it. You know, I, I, I found, the, I found my, my master's uh, wife. I know that this is the one. So, yeah, we can just kick it here. We can hang out here for a little bit. But he says, no, send me back to my master. We already have been given everything that we need for the journey. So we will not stop until we get everything back that the master wants. Amen. So keep in mind that this is a servant being served. That must be nice, huh? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's a little like a resort to me. <laughs> but he did not stay there because he got a mission. He got a mission given by his master, and he won't let nothing stop him. Amen. Now, let's go to, let's go to verse 60, 62 to 67. Now, Isaac has come from ber Roy, for he was living in the Negev. He was out to the field one evening to meditate, and at his look up, he saw Camel approaching. Rebecca also looked up and saw Isaac. She got down from the camel and asked the servant, Who is that man in the field coming to meet us? He is my servant, the servant answered. So he took her, uh, uh, so she took her veil and covered herself. Then the servant told Isa all he had done. Isa brought their uh, brother into the tent of his mother, Sarah. And Mary Rebecca, so he became his wife, and he loved her, and Isaac was com uh, uh, comforted after his mother's death. So now we see here how the servant is coming with the bride. The servant is together with the bride, and notice that the, uh, the servant says that the son is his master. So the father and the son are his master. Yeah. Do you see here how this relates to Jesus? Yeah. The servant recognized that the father sent him for the sake of bringing the bride to the son. Amen. Man, the, son, the, the servant and the bride are coming to meet the son. That's what we're seeing in here. The Lord is showing, the scripture is showing how this is the church. That's you, church. Yeah. The, the, the bride of God coming to him. But look where Isaac is. Isaac is in the Negev. Anybody have an idea how the Negev looks like? Yeah. It's a desert. Yeah. It's a desert. So a cup will be canonized in there. Yeah. But we really don't see a cup in here. 
But there actually is a cup in here. Yeah, there is. So actually, Isa is coming from Ber Hali Roy. And this means wealth of the living one who sees me. Come on. Church, the Lord has seen you crossing the enemy line. He has seen you pouring out in right alliance with others. He has seen you giving the gift that has been given to you and putting down for others so they can become mighty. He has seen you giving your life as a ransom for many. He has seen you refusing the cup of Sodom. And now you're in a desert, in a dry place. And you have done all these things. And the sun is coming from the well of the one who sees you, church. Come on. He's seeing you in your sacrifices. Yeah. He's seeing you in the desert land. He's seeing you and he's coming to you with water, the living cup, so you can drink from it. Amen. Church, this is beautiful. Yeah. This is beautiful. Husband, you are the servant and you're bringing his bride. And I know that you may be in a desert land many times, but take confidence that he's coming with the water that will refresh you, that give you the strength that you need. Amen. Wife, I know you know that you're the servant and your kids are the bride. And many times you're in a desert, in a desert where you don't know what to do when the day is hard. But the Lord, the husband, your groom is coming with living water because he sees you. Yeah. He sees your sacrifice. Mm. He sees that you are giving your life as a ransom for many. And he will meet you there and he will give you the cup, the living cup, so you can share with him Amen. in everything that, that you have. So, Bir Lahai Roy means well of the living one who sees me. So, the very place that Isaac and Rebecca meet for the first time is at that well which was named by Hagar after she had an encounter with the Lord along with Ishmael. That's, that's an amaz amazing depth right there, how the Lord can weave stories together like that. So it would be easy to get wrapped up in the beautiful love story of Isaac and Rebekah and completely overlook the fact that this unnamed servant, some might have called him an unsung hero, was there to meet his master, not Abraham, his master Isaac, and share the victorious righteous cup with him at the well of the living one who sees him. Saints, it's actually uh, quite safe to assume that this unnamed servant is Eliezer. Yeah. He's the chief servant. He's the oldest servant in the house. And in Genesis 15, Abram deduced that this is probably the man that my inheritance is going to go to. So think about that. The man who would have inherited all this is the one delivering it and bringing it to his master, the son of his master. That's, that's beautiful. This is the heart that the Lord is developing inside of us. Whether it's Eliezer or not, doesn't matter. The servant is the unsung hero fighting for his master and his brother to receive all that is in their heart and soul. That is what the Lord is doing inside of us. We don't need to be recognized. We can trust and we can know that if we follow through on these steps, that we will be met with a victorious cup of salvation. We didn't even get to the other men that were there with the unnamed servant. There were other men that joined him in this mission to get accomplished. We didn't even get into the fact that Rebecca was also an unsung hero who was a servant ready to serve whoever came into her presence. She didn't just wake up one morning and think, well, I'm probably going to have a strange encounter at the well, so I better be on my A game today. No. She was being led by the Spirit, and this was something that she had been putting into practice. Her servanthood was already being repped. Ladies, this is you tonight. Rep that servanthood. Know that the reward that the Lord has for you is coming. We know what it gets like. We talk about it often. The changing of the diapers, the feeding of our chunky little babies running around. We know how difficult that can be, and you're built for it. The Lord will meet you there at the, at the well of the living one who sees you. So this story is full of unsung heroes who drank the victorious cup of the king. So as we make a turn here, all right, we're going to point this on ourselves, and we're going to look at it through the lens of Jesus with his disciples. Let's turn to Mark 3, verse 13 through 16. As we're going through these scriptures, keep in mind the story that we just rent, went through.
Verse 13 says, Jesus went up on a mountainside and called to him those that he wanted, and they came to him. He appointed 12, designating them apostles, that they might be with him and that, 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 they might, that he might send them out to preach and to have authority to drive out demons. So Jesus has the uh, perfect alliance with the Father, and now he's bringing other sons, other servants into that alliance. He was able... Uh, uh, this is where we start having right alliance with our brothers, when we rightly respond to the calling, to that drawing from the Father. We can never forget that we were brought into this alliance with the Son and the Father. We didn't just stumble into it. We didn't make it happen ourselves. We were brought here. We were drawn here. With that in mind, let's turn to Luke 10, verse 1 through 2. And you can keep your finger in Luke 10 because we're going to read a couple verses from there. <clears throat> it says, After this, the Lord appointed 70 others and sent them two by two ahead of him to every town and place where he was about to go. He told them, The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. Saints, the harvest is plentiful, but the servants are few. We are asking the Lord, Lord, raise us up as unsung heroes. Raise us up as servants and bring more here that can go and bring in the harvest that you desire. Amen. Look, God has appointed us to work in a team, and he's uniting us with the Father. We need to get our alliances very serious because others' lives depend on it. Let's continue reading in Luke. We're going to read in Luke 4. Do not take a purse of a bag or sandal. Do, uh, do not greet anyone on the road. When you enter a house, first say peace to this house. If a man of peace is there, your peace will rest on, on, on him. If not, I will, uh, I will return to you. It will return to you. Uh, stay in the house, eating and drinking whatever they give, whatever they give you. For the worker deserves his wages. Do not move around from house to house. When you enter a town and are welcome, eat what is set before you. Heal the sick who are, who are there and tell them, the kingdom of God is near. But when you enter a town and are not welcome, go into the street and say, even the dust of, of, of your town that, that stinks of your feet will weep off against you. Yet... The sure of this is the kingdom of God is near. Amen. I tell you, it will be more bearable on, on, on that day for Sodom, and for Sodom that of that, uh, than for that town. So here we, what we're seeing here is that the Lord is actually sending the 12, but he's not sending them with nothing. He's sending them with authority. The Lord is giving them resources. Yeah. He's making, he's building them into something. He's giving it everything that he has, he's giving it to them. And now they are required to give that to others. Yeah. That is essential for us to be able to drink of the cup of God. That what, that what we have received for ourselves, we can give to others, to those around us. Amen. To those that God has put next to us, so they can do the same. This is, the, uh, this is the mission that God has for them. But notice that those that not receive this will be worse than Sodom. Because they're selfish. That's what the Lord is showing them. The selfish one, the one that do not want what you have, it will be worse for them because they already drank of the cup. Ooh. Now, let's continue on Peter. Peter 1, 4, 10 to 11. It says on verse 10, each of you should use whatever gift you have, you have received, to serve others, a faithful stewards of God's grace in, in its various form. If anyone speak, they should do so as one who speak the very word of God. If anyone serve, they should do so with the strength God provides, Come on. so that in all things God may be praised through Jesus Christ, to him be the glory and the power forever and ever. Amen. Amen. So the gift that we've been given, we need 
that for our brothers. That's the only reason why we receive it. Yeah. It's for them to become mighty. Yeah. So as we receive gifts, we pour out into others so they can become mighty as well. Amen. We stop the cup, the, the cup of Sodom by actually giving ourselves, pouring out ourselves to others. For what is being put into us can be put into others. Amen. This is how we actually taste of the cup. Yeah, so we're learning to become unnamed, unsung heroes receiving from our master and proving ourselves to be faithful servers, stewards as we serve others. Amen. John 12, verse 24 through 26, it says, I tell you the truth, unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. The man who loves his life will lose it, while the man who hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, my servant will also be. My father will honor the one who serves me. Saints, I love this verse. Jesus didn't just tell this to his disciples. He didn't just preach this to them. He demonstrated it for them. And he said, if anyone is going to follow me, if anyone wants to serve me, this is what it's going to look like. You're going to die and so that you might produce many seeds. Our great high priest, is, he willingly crossed enemy lines and laid down his life that he might ransom many. There's nothing like following a king that will lead his servants in battle. Saints, this is personal to me because I've been in war. I've been in a fight before. I know what it's like to be sent out on a mission and to be stuck out on something and, not, and feel like there's no leader there. That's not the king that we serve. That's not the shepherd that's leading us. He goes before us, and he's there with us, continually leading us, giving us what we need so that we can accomplish the mission. And he's showing us how we're going to do it. It's by laying down our life. This kind of faithful servant, he will receive honor along with his master. In Luke 10, 3, Jesus says, go. I'm sending you out like lamb among wolves. There's nothing pretty about that. There's nothing... Uh, uh, fake about it either he's letting them know exactly what it's going to look like you will cross enemy lines you will go into enemy territory and it'll be vicious and it'll be violent but you will be victorious Amen. we're giving our life as a ransom for many we have to die for ourselves and for, and cross enemy lines so that others can experience christ so that we can be a servant that is bringing back the bride of christ to the son and to our master we give our life for the building of the body and he's sending us as sheep among wolves. Church, we're going to do this. We're going to do it here, and we're going to continue to do it all over that map. Yes, we are. Let's go to Matthew 4 and say, reject the carnal cup when you get there. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Matthew 4, starting on verse 6. If you are the son of God, he says, this is Satan speaking to Jesus. Throw your soul down, for it is written. He will command his angel concerning you, and they will lift, lift you up in their hands, so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. Jesus answered him, It is also written, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. As again, again, the devil took him to the very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world, and their splendors, all these I will give to you, he said, if you will bow down and worship me. Jesus said to him, away from me, Satan, for it is written, worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Then the devil, the devil left him and angels came to attempt him. Church, this is the cup of, uh, of Sodom in his splendor. Is the enemy trying to refuse? trying to make us turn from the promises of God so we can take the promises of this kingdom that they were nothing to us. This is Satan trying to tempt us to actually move away from the callings that we have for each other, the support that we have for our brothers, the dying for ourselves, for one another, so they can become the righteousness of God. That's the cover, the cover of Sodom. The cover of Satan is to... Uh, break us apart from the will of God so we can go in our selfish motive and do what is pleasing to our flesh. But it's, it is written that no temptation 
have come to us that the Lord do not provide a way out. Amen. We do have a way out. Amen. We do have everything that we need to overcome the, the evil one. The Lord has given us the powers, the gift, and brothers alongside us so we can overcome the enemy. Amen. We have all power to overcome and reject the carnal cup of Sodom. So Jesus, at his very end, he was able to drink the cup. He rejected this cup so he can drink the real cup that brings life to many. Amen. Let's continue on Luke's them. Let's see how the disciples deal, deal with this. Rejecting the cup of Sodom. On verse 17, the 70 return with joy and say, Lord, even the demons submit to us in your name. He replied, I saw Satan falling, falling like lightning from heaven. I have given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome all the power of the enemy. Nothing will harm you. However, do not rejoice that the spirits submit to you, but rejoice that your name are written in heaven. We do not rejoice on what the enemy flees from us because they're actually fleeing from the power of Jesus that is in us. Come on. But we rejoice that we finish our race to the end, faithful, Amen. by not giving up the cup of Satan, by not giving up the cup of Sodom, by actually being faithful to, to the Lord and the power that is in us through him and belongs to him. We don't take honor for ourselves. We don't take glory on ourselves, but we take glory that our names is written in heaven because we'll finish our race. Amen. Amen. The carnal cup is a temporary satisfaction. Yeah. And as was exposed on Sunday, when we boast in what we have now, what we've accomplished now, we're passing up on the opportunity to drink of the king's righteous cup, yeah. the one that is to come. The Lord is leading us to refuse the carnal cup now so that we might drink of the king's cup in his glory. In Luke 10, 21, it says, At that time, Jesus, full of joy through the Holy Spirit, said, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and learned and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for this was your good pleasure. Our Lord Jesus has given us the right to drink from his cup. He, as little children, we come and we're ready to serve, and he is leading us along. He has shown us how it's done and shown us that there are certain steps that must be taken, but there is a great reward at the end. The Father is showing, this, showing us these things because he knows that we're going to need to know that in order to continue to do them. Come on, church. We have the right to eat from the cup of the king. Yeah. Rejoice on that. Yeah. But as 2 Corinthians 1a says, we don't want you to be uninformed. Let's get, let's get there. 2 Corinthians 1a through 11 says the king cup when you get there. We do not want you to be uninformed, brothers, about the hardship we suffer in the province of Asia. We were under great pressure, far beyond our ability to endure. So we, uh, uh, we dis despair even of life. Instead, in our, in our hearts, we left the sent, uh, I'm sorry, I uh, lost my place. In that, uh, instead, in our hearts, we flee, we flee the sentence of death, but, he, but this happened that we may not re, uh, rely on, on ourselves, but on God, Amen. who raised the dead. Amen. He has delivered us from, from such a deadly peril, and he will deliver us. Amen. On him, we have set our hope yes. that he will continue to deliver us yeah. as you help us uh, by your prayers. Then many will give thanks on our behalf for the glorious favors granted us in answer to the prayers of many. Amen. Church, we don't want you to be uninformed that the cup of the kingdom is, is difficult, is hardship. 
but he's the one that bring life. Amen. He's the one that bring victory. He's the one that bring delivery. He's the one that actually free people from the sentence of death. And we must drink it because he has given us the rights to do so. At his promise, we will drink it. And it's on our displays tonight for us to be able to drink that cup. Yeah. But if you see, we need the prayers of many. We need each other. Yeah. We need each other to continue living the life that was set up before us by Christ. That we can go, we, uh, we, uh, we can set uh, righteous alliance with our brothers. Mm. That we can pour out our resources on them so they can become the righteousness of God. Mm. So we can cross enemy line for them so they can be free from the sentence of death. And we will refuse the cup of Sodom and get the cup of the king. He has granted us that power and we will take it. Amen. Church, we don't want you to be in informed. We need to continue fighting. This is a daily process. Yeah. This is constantly we drink the cup of the king. Amen. It's not one Time and done. It's daily that we die to ourselves and we get to drink his cup so we can live for others and then we can die for them. Come on, church. The Lord give us his deliverance and victory is ours. Amen. So, in one of our last passages, we're going to go to Hebrews chapter 6 and we're going to pick up in verse 19 and read through 7 2 says, we have this hope as an anchor for the soul, firm and secure. It enters into the inner sanctuary behind the curtain, where our forerunner, Jesus, has entered on our behalf. He has become a high priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. This Melchizedek was king of Salem and priest of God Most High. He met Abraham returning from the defeat of the kings and blessed him. And Abraham gave him a tenth of everything. First... The name of Melchizedek means king of righteousness. Then also king of Salem means king of peace. So brothers, this is the hope that we have. We have this hope founded that Jesus has went before us and he has become a priest in the order of Melchizedek. Saints, do a simple search in whatever Bible tool that you use and type in my servant and look at the men's names that show up. Look, if you want to be a man of God like Abraham, like Moses, like David, like Jesus, be a servant. This is what the Lord is producing inside of us. This has always been the pattern, and it must continue to perpetuate through our generations. Our children need to see this inside of us. They need to see, imagine I am Marlon's servant, and imagine he sends me on a mission for Daniel, and I view Daniel as my master. That's the kind of perspective that we've seen with Abraham and with his servant. That he was going, he said, this is my master, but his son is also my master. I will also serve him. I will also give my life for him so that he might have what he needs. Amen. Look, we're going to learn to drink from the, cups, the king's cup alone and reject the carnal cup. We've received from him alone, and therefore we continue to drink from him alone. He's adjusting the motives of our hearts so that we will reject the carnal cup of Sodom and choose the righteous cup of the king. Church, are you ready to be a servant of the Father? Yes. Are you ready to serve the king? Yes. Do you want to taste of his cup? Yes. Do you want to drink it? Yes. Stand on your feet. We need to learn to make right alliance with our brothers. To be in right shalom with them. To fight for their vision. To fight for what, they call, for what the Lord has called them. We need to pour out our life, our resources, our gift for their sake. We need to cross enemy line to save many. We need to get to that map. We need to die for each other. We need to embrace difficulties and cross enemy line. We will reject the cup of Sodom. The cup of this world of selfishness, of self-reliance, on seeking to be comfort in the gospel of the, of, of the American dream. 
that doesn't bring anything. That just brings comfort and selfishness. But we will die for each other. So then we can drink of the cup of the king. Let's go to our final passage on Psalm 116. 12, 12 through 16. How can I repay the Lord for all his goodness to me? How, church, can we repay him? Ask yourself, how can you repay him for all goodness that he has been giving you? How he has blessed you when your wife, when your kids, when brothers? How will you repay him? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of my Lord. That's how we repay him. We lift up the cup that he drinks and we drink as well of it. I will fulfill my vow to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Church, we will fulfill our vows. We will fulfill our vows to each other and we will die for each other's vision as we claim already that that came out of my out of our mouths that we will do precious in your size of lord is the death of his saints it is pressure church that we die it is pressure that we give our life for his sake it is pressure that we die for our brothers we need to value these things and forget about the things of this world Oh, Lord, truly, I am your servant. I am your servant, the son of your main servant. You have freed me from my chain. We are the son of the main servant, that servant that crossed the enemy line and brought the bride of the, bride of the son. He brought it from distant land, and he presented to him clean and we are wrinkled. The servant did this for his master. We need to be the servant. We need to be the son of the main servant that this cause is promised to us that we will fight for the church to be what the church must become. Church, we will reject the cup of Sodom and we will accept the cup of Merchizedek, the cup of our king, the cup of the Father, the cup of Jesus Christ, and we will die for our, to ourselves. Today, we will choose to make right alliance with our brothers. We will put all our resources for their sake and their victory. We will cross enemy line for there to be righteous. We will give our life, our, our selfish expectation our time, our resources for their sake. And only then we will be able to, ter to take up the cup of the king. Saints, this, these kinds of words, it's not about how well we could put them together. It's just how we started the message because we knew that this was something that the Lord is working inside of our hearts. Can you tell that the Lord is working that inside of us we knew that the Lord gave it to us to deliver it to you because we can see it at work inside of you saints this is what it looks like to lay down our life to know that we can and we will accomplish everything that he said that we're going to accomplish that when he sends us out on mission that the Lord is going before us and that he's going to bring us back that we are going to meet him at the well of the one who sees us, and he is the living one who gives us that living water. Saints, as we lay down our lives in this kind of servanthood, we will see the harvest come in. We will see many brothers brought back. We will see the bride of Christ coming to, to the groom. So lift your hands as we pray. Mighty God, we love you. Father, we want to be pleasing sons to you. Lord, we say thank you for bringing us into this servanthood. Lord, that you are the one who is developing us. You are the one who is giving us everything that we need, mighty one. Lord, you are the one who's making us strong as we go into battle. Father, that you are empowering us again and again. Lord, that you are giving us the discernment to turn away from the cup of Sodom. 
so that we might receive the cup of salvation. Lord, we say this is our honor to you, Lord. This is how we give you glory, by pouring out our life, Lord, and we know that it is precious to you. We love you and we praise you in Jesus' name.